the owner of this uh, room uh, recently patched, patched the box and the unintended way of solving the box has been patched so i'm not going to disclose what was the unintended way because it may be a spoiler to you so the intended way of solving this box is once you get a shell on the box as demon instead in, we are inside a docker container and uh, from here on uh, we need to scan for the internal post that are listening so you can see here we do not have wget we uh, we only have curl and uh, other commands like gcc etc we do not even have nmap because uh, docker container do not have any of these commands so what we can do here is uh, i have some static binaries downloaded uh, you can get them from the github so let's see uh, i'll guide you through it keep watching so i'll go here to <coughs> static binaries folder then inside this uh, i have uh, binaries so let's cd through it then here you can see and let's select the linux because this is a linux box and here it's asking uh, what is the architecture so uh, here you can type arc uh, sorry it's uh, arch and then uh, it will tell you it's uh, x86 underscore 64 select this one x86 64 and then here you, we have the commands. Uh, these are the static binaries. So you can see here, this is nmap. And in case you do not have this, um, what you can do is you can search for nmap and then let's say static binary. So static binary is actually a compiled stuff of nmap. Now, what happens is whenever you execute nmap here some external libraries or uh, scripts are loaded with it that are not in build or inside the nmap uh, command but with the static binary you have everything inside the nmap command only everything that is external usually is internal in this nmap command that is why the size of this nmap binary is way too big than the normal one so uh, that being said uh, let's mm, uh, yeah open this one static binaries and map and from this github repo you can just click right click on view raw and then click on copy link from here on you can uh, let me go to temporary folder yeah from here on you can just double get this and uh, it will download it once the downloading has completed um actually my file named is weird so let's change my file name this is the file name so i'll rename it to nmap all right okay so we have it downloaded so let's launch a python server here and then we know that we do not have wget on the box but we have curl on the box you can see here uh, okay so what i'll do is i'll go to temporary folder here and then curl uh, 10 8 14 24 is my try hack me ip you can see right here and then slash uh, specify the file you want to download that is nmap and here i did a mistake i did not specify dash o flag okay so let's do it <clears throat> so call the 10 dot 8 dot 14 dot 24 slash nmap then dash o to output the file uh, in nmap uh, so the contents of nmap will be output uh, will be saved to the file that i specify here that is nmap if you do not specify this flag then uh, what it will do it uh, it will output the contents of the file on your screen and that may crash your terminal like i did it here and my terminal was just uh, crashed now let's give it executable permissions and let's close the below terminal zoom in and then just do dot slash nmap and then we first first of all need to know the ip of the machine so you can see that our container has this ip so we're gonna uh, see if any internal ports are listening so for that i'll launch my nmap scan and then dash p dash to scan all the 65,435 ports on this ip and dash v is for the verbose mode to output the ports uh, right off as they are found press enter and this scan takes some while to run and here we can see it uh, the scan was completed and, and only 80 port was detected as open here you might be thinking what is happening it was uh, actually this is this scan was made on the docker container 
not on the uh, host machine that is uh, connected to it so in order to scan for the host machine uh, and not the docker container we first of all need to uh, run a nweb scan uh, like this so nweb dash vv and well let's remove it yeah nmap and press the ip here instead of two i'll say one then up to four so it's uh, what it will scan four host actually that is 172.17.0.1.2.3 and 0.4 it will scan four host i could have specified the subnet but uh, for the time sake for the time being i'm gonna i'm just gonna specify the four host you can do it five six seven whatever but i'm gonna say four because usually it's uh, the uh, consecutive one like if it's uh, 0 0.2 it may be 0 0.3 or 0 0.1 that is why i chose uh, from 0 0.1 to 4 all right so let's press enter here and now this can take some while to run so i'll get back to you once it's done all right it's done and we can see it identified two uh, sorry two hosts uh, the first one being 172.70 by 0 0.1 and the second one being 0 0.2 that is our docker container you can see here and uh, this is the host name you can see here and which identifies that this is our docker container and this one is another one which seems to be the main machine on which docker is running so you can see here the, it has ssh open and a port 80 open also so let's scan this one for any other open post that may be useful for the exploitation part that we can take advantage of so dot slash nmap then dash vv for verbose mode specify the ip here dash b dash to scan all the open all the posts sorry press enter again this can take some while to run so i'll get back to you once it's done after a few minutes of scanning it you know, we can see uh, it identified four ports open here 22 80 uh, these are the default ones and here you can see 5985 is closed uh, so just uh, ignore this one then we have 5986 open okay so we want to know what is running on 5986 so now we know that port 5986 is open on the host machine so let's uh, search for 5986 port exploit and we can see here that it says pen testing winrm but winrm is on generally on windows and this is a linux box so chances, chances are this is not the one we are looking for so ignore the win winrm ones and go down a little bit and these are the winrm ones here you can see uh, another interesting topic that is omega critical vulnerabilities uh, that allows remote takeover uh, so let's see so this is a vulnerability in OMI affecting countless Azure customers. Here we have the CVE of this issue of this vulnerability, which allows unauthenticated RC as root. So well, let's copy this CVE and let's just paste in here. And if this allows unauthenticated RC as root, then the POC must be available on GitHub. So I'm going to say GitHub and instantly I get the first result on GitHub. So I'm going to open this and we have a cve python script here so uh, let's scroll down and here you can see it says uh, it is a poc to export unauthenticated rce and, but this one is, uh, is on the powershell and for the python you just need to specify the ip with the dash t and then the port and then the command that you want to execute so i'm gonna download this python script we'll just click on draw copy this <coughs> url split the shell and then go to temporary folder let's say w get this we download it and then just rename it to something more reasonable i'll say omi.py launch the python uh, python server there and then again curl 10.8.14.24 slash omi.py Again, I forgot to specify dash o due to which the file was not saved and the contents were output on the screen. So call 10.8.14.24 slash omi.py dash o omi.py. Okay, so the file has downloaded. Let's just run it. Python 3 omi.py and specify the IP that is 172.17.0.1 and then uh, what else do we need to specify? 
let's see okay so we need to specify the port so that is 596 so dash p 5986 and then the command that you want to execute should be anything so i'll say id let's hope this works and we can see it stays root so it looks like this did work so i'm gonna copy this again and then i'll say hostname and we can say it says ubuntu so it looks like we have a remote code execution on the main machine that is awesome and uh, <clears throat> from here on you can actually do the enumeration part and get the flex or you can get the reverse shell so in order to get the reverse shell from here what i will do is i'll go here and then i'll say reverse shell cheat sheet copy this one let's say echo paste it here and then rev.sh so i'm going to save it in rev.sh specify the port 1234 and then your try hack me ip here and press enter so we have it saved in rev.sh launch the python uh, server here and then uh, in the main machine i will run the command to download this uh, rev.sh script that con contains the reverse shell payload so i'll say wget wget because wget must be installed on the main machine host machine so wget 10 8 14 24 slash rev.sh enter and it says none i do not know why it says none so let's execute ls to see whether we have the file saved or not and we can see we have the file saved all right so let's launch the netcat listener on port 1234 and uh, let's execute uh, bash rev.sh script press enter and we have a shell as root on the box and we are root here so here you can just go to root and fetch the root flag here one more thing that we do not have any user flag in the, inside the home folder so for that you need to specify you need to find it using the find command so find slash dash name and then use it text and press enter and it will show you two output uh, which contains the user.txt file from there on you can just get out the contents of the user.txt and get the user flag so i hope this uh, tutorial was kind of helpful to you these are the results here and if anything is uh, if anything was not uh, understood by you you can always uh, reach out to me on discord thank you for watching i'll see you next time